Hey everybody, it's June 7th, it's 11.09 a.m. my time. You are here at the um, DEI working group um, community call or just regular call, I guess, working call for chaos. And um, just a reminder, this meeting is under the chaos code of conduct. So just keep that in mind as you interact with us. And if you would like to keep your camera off, you are absolutely welcome to do that. Not a problem at all. Um, we don't care. We love everybody the same. Here's the agenda. If you need the minutes, um, somebody, we can drop that in there for you. No biggie. I'm just going to open the chat and move it over here. There we go. Um, we had just talked about birds for like 10 minutes because I, this was my question today. And um, yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot to talk about with birds because they're amazing. They're really cool. They're like little baby dinosaurs that are here with us right now. So they're cool. Um, okay, so quick on the agenda, just as a reminder, we've kind of changed our format here a little bit. So the first 30 minutes here were spent on um, DEI related things and DEI regional leads. And then also um, the second kind of half of this meeting will move to badging because we have combined these two meetings. So that's how our agenda is going to go. Um, of course, these are open agendas. If there's something you want to talk about, feel free to just drop it in here and we'll we'll add it to the list. And if we can get to it, we absolutely will. So the first one is just um, a follow up from last time, uh, just to let everybody know the common working group did approve the changes to this metric. And so we're going to be publishing that. Um, as soon as uh, we're ready to do that. So in case anybody's wondering what happened with that, um, that's what happened. Yeah, that, that's my action item. Uh, sorry about the delay. No worries. I'm, uh, I'm updating the, uh, all the metrics pages on the website right now, and that's uh, it's actually taking longer than I thought it would. So I'm about halfway through. When I'm done with that, I'll, I'll push the event location equity metric. Yeah, I noticed we keep adding, I mean, well, obviously we keep adding metrics, but um, I think we're up to 87 now. And so yeah. it just <laughs> keeps making that list longer for you, Kevin. <laughs> what are you doing, Kevin? I'm um, adding those two new modules in. Oh, okay, gotcha. So okay. the adding the modules in is actually the easy part because the we have a template now. So you just uh, go to the metric page okay. and add the template. Uh, but then the uh, that that's uh, that first module we're adding has the links to the uh, the two URLs. Mm -hmm. So the time consuming part is actually going in and adding those links. So okay. pulling those links from the uh, GitHub and the, yep. Uh, I'm trying to pull them from the, uh, the spreadsheet. Oh, gotcha. Okay, uh, just a little back. bit easier. Uh, yeah. How if it's not in the spreadsheet, then I have to go to GitHub and grab them. Okay. Uh, okay. But it just uh, surprisingly just takes a little while to do that. It's just uh, it's not hard or anything. It's just uh, yeah. a little time consuming. Okay. Well, thanks for doing that. Okay. Any other questions about that? Okay. Moving on. So this was um, from last week. I meant to bring it up and I forgot. So I added it to this week. Um, for those who know, we uh, Chaos partners with the All In project, which is kind of managed by GitHub. And there's a few other collaborators in that, um, but uh, one thing that they're working on right now, and this is for um, uh, there's an All In for students and All In for maintainers, and this All In is for the maintainers part. Um, they're trying to release this what they're calling a community collaboration. So they were just wondering if we could give them some feedback. Um, just you know, another set of eyes on this stuff. Not a big deal. Um, here's the link right here. Um, and this is basically designed to connect larger open source projects that have a lot of resources and have a lot of contributors with smaller projects that just don't have those resources or contributors to, to do some of these um, DEI related tasks. And, uh, and so um, a small project can kind of uh, sign up or request a um, some help in one of these four areas. And then, um, in theory, a large project that has agreed to be a partner project for us or for all in um, would then kind of grab that issue and assign uh, take control of that issue assign themselves and then move everything offline to implement the thing and then come back here and close it. 
So um, obviously we don't probably have time today to kind of look through this in any great detail, but um, if, if people want to look at it and then offer up any any comments either here or in this repo, or however you want to do it as an issue or whatever you, you say. How does the, so if I was a large project and I wanted to volunteer my services, how do I do that? I saw that down below, but. So this would be, you would just reach out to this email and then um, you're going to need to have a point of contact um, and th that should subscribe to the repo. Okay. And then as, as work is requested, you would jump in and volunteer and then come back to, then the small project will come back to close the issue when the work is complete. Okay. So then, would it make sense? Was there a reason they had an email and you wouldn't just post an issue? Well, I think they're trying to save the issues for requests. I see. Um, but I, you know, it's, it's all kind of like the ship to learn, right? So if that's going to become unwieldy, because okay. this kind of this email address is a kind of a catch all. Yeah, so a lot of times they're pointed to this email address. Okay. And so someone at GitHub is responsible for um, keeping an eye on this, but um, it's not always maybe top of mind or, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of like one. Mm -hmm. Why don't they call it like community collaboration at all in open source.org? Just make a new person. They could, yeah, yeah. And so then as a small project, I post an issue mm -hmm. where I ask for help. Yeah, and there's some um, issue templates. So if you um, go to issue, new issues, oh, yeah. these would be your four things you could okay. do. Gotcha. So you would just fill this out and then you would just put in your information, okay. like who you are and what you want. So it's trying the the goal is to just be again that point of connection, but not really be involved in the actual work at all. Like it's very hands off and kind of relying on folks to self manage <laughs> the process. Is there so, somebody that's going to watch this repository? It reminds me a little of like event badging. You know, yeah. like somebody applies and it ends up as an issue and it gets assigned, but there's always you kind of there. Yeah, yeah, so I think definitely there would be folks to keep an eye on this for sure. Yeah. Okay. So and, you know, if there's an issue that's been open for quite a while, mm -hmm. uh, maybe, you know, touch base with those two projects, the small and the large, to see if things are really happening or okay. if installed, you know, but I think, again, the idea is to be pretty hands off. Um, okay. In general. So yeah, so there's that. And when these these um them? oh go ahead, sorry. When are they launching this? This this thing. It's soft launched right now. So if you go to the uh let me close this. If you go to the all in website, oops, it's it's open under maintainers. Um, but they haven't really talked too much about it yet. Okay. Um, it's still in like a soft launch. So it's been sent to a few folks for eyes on it um, and some feedback. Um, this group is one of those folks. So it's pretty new. And, and um, the next step will be to reaching out to some large projects to see if they would like to be volunteers. Um, yeah. So that's kind of how that's going to go. Okay. Why, um, why would they for small, I mean, just a bunch of questions. Why would you have, if you go back to the page, yeah, scroll down to the small projects part, mm -hmm. why would they in point two suggest that you coordinate somewhere else? Why wouldn't you want to do that within that issue that was posted? Um, because I'll, I think it's more appropriate in um, the project's repo because the changes are happening in the project. Mm -hmm. So if I'm changing the default branch from master to main, for instance, mm -hmm. um, I would want all of that work to happen in the repo of the project where it's applicable. So when right. they discuss how the changes are going, I don't, I'm just trying to like continue to push any conversation out into the open so that anybody could see it 
Yeah, I think I think it would happen in that that project's repo, um, that discussion. Okay, in an issue there somewhere. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because what I what we were afraid would happen is um, if work is happening here, but the code is changing in another repo, like that's two different places that that everybody has to kind of keep an eye on. If that makes sense. Yeah. So could we maybe ask that, like. Point, <laughs> point one, and then after that, like, you know, open an issue in your own repository and if appropriate, point to it from this issue or something like that. Could link it maybe? Yeah, the, don't, you don't do your work here, but just if you could point to where this is being. Yeah, that's a good idea. Let me make a note of that. I like that a lot. And you could always just say, like, if appropriate, it's not a requirement, but it just might allow other people to just kind of click on that and see what they did. Yeah. <laughs> like, they could just solve the problem without, they could just solve the problem by reading somebody else's discussion. Yeah, I think um, some of these, it's mostly that it's maybe not as much how to do it, it's just finding the time to do it. But to your point, that is also super valid, right? Like. Is, is work actually getting done? Is it actually helpful? Mm -hmm. You know, and being able to link and see, yeah, there was an issue. Here's what happened. Here's the code review. All of it happened and it's changed and everybody's happy and it's all thanks to this. Yeah. So I think that's a really good. I'm going to write that down. Okay. Yeah, we just, um, I think the all in um, project was just trying to like, set it up and then get out of the way basically you know and let them figure it out and then get out of the way but be there as just like a facilitator if needed or you know make sure things are moving slow, smoothly but out of the way a little bit okay great anybody else have comments on this or questions at least right now i appreciate the eyes on it selfishly because I am helping all in with that so <laughs> I appreciate so, you guys Thanks. so just to be clear if we if we do want to edit it or have comments we're supposed to put in a pull request or open an issue either one okay. honestly either one because it's a, it's meant to be open you know in a collaborative effort so yeah thanks everybody I'll put that in here too Oops. Well, if I can write, that'd be good. Okay. All right, moving on to DEI regional leads. I think Matt German probably looks like he's right here, so he's ready to talk. I did. I just wanted to let people know that, you know, we're on um, the way that we have done Chaos Africa and had really good success there. We have a couple contacts with uh, Chaos Latin America, or to do something similar in Latin America, as well as the Balkans. So Sally Yang has agreed to help lead things in Latin America, and Christy Provry has agreed to lead things in the Balkans. They have both been kind of long-term participants in things we've been doing around DEI. Um, and so um, I think one of the things that really it's a the focus of a lot of this regional work is to try to help people um, just become uh, like acquainted with open source. So there seems to be a, a need for not necessarily answering the question of like how open source can help you get a job or how open source can help you become, you know, more integrated in the tech sector, but like, how do you even become engaged in open source initially? Um, like what are the challenges of engaging with open source? What are, you know, some expectations? Um, you know, we talked about like, if you are involved in an open source project that's heavily run by corporations, what that might look like versus a, an open source project that is more based on volunteerism. Um, so just trying to help people, um, overcome those really early challenges to engaging with open source. 
And it's a, you know, the, the thinking is, is that in different regions, different folks will have um, different barriers that are in, uh, that are around participating in open source. And so I think um, the work that they're doing is really just starting. It's very early, but um, that's kind of the focus. And I'll, I have to see a hand raised and then I'll talk about that open source 101 comment. So yeah, Gerardo. I was just wondering how you start about uh, those um, those sessions. It's something that you are doing on um, on remote with those communities. I'm just saying this because that's something I'm trying to do here in, in Portugal. Okay. Um, so I don't, just in terms of like how the folks plan on connecting with people in the region, is that the question? What is the, the construction? So you're talking about experiences around the world, but uh, uh, what is your role on this? Or... Yeah, so um, so the if I understand the question, so the regional leads would would really do a lot of outreach work with existing communities in the different regions um, to try to understand how the different communities, say in Latin America or in Africa, are helping people overcome the challenges of participating in open source. Um, and then the idea is this open source 101 to potentially do a series of courses that we would make publicly available to everybody that they could take that they that people could take for free um, to just get a better understanding of, of open source. So I think the the data collection stage or trying to understand where people are at is what's happening right now. And if you have thoughts on how to engage with different people to understand what the challenges are for engaging with open source, <laughs> we'll love to have you be part of that conversation because we're going to have it here. And then the delivery is really about these open and public courses in terms of helping different people in different regions. So I think we're still in the very early stages of this. Thanks. Um, in <clears throat> my case, I've uh, been invited uh, by the city of Lisbon to start a series of um, <clears throat> not small talks with uh, um, young, uh, well, young people, basically. And they're 16, 17, they are on the technical training. And um, uh, so I'm looking for any materials that I could use to help them understand some advantages and what they could expect on open source. Um, and so, and that's something that I, I've been trying to, to arrange here. But also, that's probably not the, the scope you're, you're looking at. I'm also doing this with, the, um, with well, the, the business side uh, all around cities here in Portugal. So going to the, to the associations of several types of enterprises on several different sectors of industry and so doing specific actions for them. But those I, I'll do trying to find a, a suitable project that's more connected to them. But for general public, there's, uh, you are missing a lot of um, uh, places to help people engage in open source. Once they are, there's plenty of communities to help them. But to break the, the ice, Think, uh, we're still struggling here. I think that's what a lot of these, a lot of the focus here is as well. I think, like as you say, break the ice. Um, sometimes we called it like "Hello World" for open source. Like, just how do you, like, mm -hmm. how what what do you need to understand? Um, and it's we really think you know open source can serve as a, a great way for people to connect in the tech sector, but I think those really early questions. Um, so I, I think it'd be great to have you as part of this conversation. Um, and I'm, I can't really, I don't know what Sela and Christy and Ruth who leads the Chaos Africa efforts, you know, kind of what they have, but I, I do know that they're working on assembling resources in their particular regions 
which may or may not be applicable in Portugal. I mean, that would be something that you could take a look at. Um, so definitely, I'd love to have you part of that conversation. Are there any other questions on that? Okay, so one of the things that we I'm I'm investigating, I just wanted to let you know too, like as as per, as we progress and try to understand the um, kind of the challenges and barriers for participating in that early participation in open source, we'd like to create a series of of courses. I'm doing some investigation right now um, to use Canvas as a possible delivery tool for the courses. Um, we have it available here in the university system. So I'm investigating right now. It's called like, uh, NU advance or something like that. And, um, it may be a, a platform that we could provide, you know, these non-credit publicly available courses for people to take as needed. But I just wanted to keep you updated that I'm investigating that, but I don't have a clear answer yet. And, and I'll mention my first funding for open source research was back long time ago at when I was at Drexel. Um, we developed a bunch of free and open HFOS uh, software curriculum focused on open, open source, particularly aimed at the <clears throat> um, 11th through 14th grade so late high school junior college students so i can look that up as well matt i had a quick question um a little bit off topic but sort of on topic um going back to the the use of canvas as a platform um, we had talked about this, I don't even know where, somewhere, about setting up small, tiny videos and uh, a, a learning path for just onboarding into chaos. So doing like five minute videos instead of having that one gigantic onboarding session once a month, you know, yep. breaking those down. Um, is that something we could use for, use Nebraska for, or should I just set those up like, um, cause I have like a free for teacher account right now, okay. um, which is obviously free. I, I don't know yet. It looks like a lot of the courses that are, like if you followed that link, they look like they're broader than just like how to, how to join chaos. Yeah, you know? right, right, so right. They're about broader learning. So I, I'm guessing my argument, if I was to have success here, would be something along the lines of, you know, open source is a path for people to engage in the tech sector. It's an opportunity to, you know, um, provide a, a paths to a more global path for people. And that's why we want to offer this course. And so I think chaos would probably be too narrow. Okay. So I can just do it on my free for teacher account. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Perfect. And I don't know if that's going to work, but that, that link there, this is just me rooting around a little bit and doing some investigation. I mean, and even if it didn't, so if we used the um, University of Nebraska Canvas, would we would it have to go here, or is it something we could just host on Chaos? Oh no. Okay. Not TBD. Okay, that's fair. Anybody else have comments or questions before we move on? Just a suggestion. Um, that maybe this kinds of um, content should be um, uh, maintained and curated in a, in an open and public platform, easily um, used by anyone. And uh, yes, Ag agreed. Um, we had only just kind of. I had just only leaned towards can Canvas because it was something that was kind of immediately available to show proof of concept. But, uh, you know, when I, I, what are the other platforms that are available out there that would be like an LMS that would be open source? Oh, there's, Moodle okay. or... there's, there's a lot. Uh, open EDX. I, 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 for now, I was just thinking about uh, Git. Uh, 
but if you want to do it within the LMS, <clears throat> I've been in contact with the Open EDX and with Moodle. Okay. Those, Moodle, yeah. yeah. Moodle's pretty widely used in the in whatever the replacement word is for the global south. <laughs> yes, and then there's a, an open EDX, uh, so it's also uh, quite well established, especially in the, in the US. So, um, and they probably could be persuaded to, to join in and, and uh, supply an, an instance. Okay. Do um, do Moodle is Moodle cost? Uh, well, the hosting is okay. And so, if you want to have a managed instance, uh, they can provide as also the Open EDX guys. Okay. So, I would uh, characterize. I think it's like I would characterize it as Drupal for LMSs. Um, you can install it for free and hosting it, host it relatively cheaply, but there, there's definitely a cost to configuring it the way that you want. Okay. Uh, that's the same reason why you're using GitHub. Mm -hmm. They yeah. manage that instance for you. And so, uh, but uh, they are always looking good. So I think OpenEDX could be actually more open to the idea of maintaining an open globally available uh, research center for uh, training on on these kinds of issues. Okay. Don't forget the, the the LPI, but the LPI is more focused on their own content. So, the Linux Professional Institute. Okay. Well, this is great. Thanks for sharing this. Okay. If you want uh, a way to reach them, uh, just uh, call me back, and yeah. I'll put you in contact. Are you on? Are you in our Slack channel? Uh, <coughs> okay, I could. I'll ping you there. Thank you. Okay, thanks everybody. Um, let's move on to badging, if we can. Um, I should have put this one first. Um, GitHub is basically announcing our project badging initiative with um, with all in and chaos um, it's gonna go live at um, 9 a.m pacific which is basically right after this meeting so that will be really exciting um, to see it out in the world live again we did a panel discussion a couple of weeks ago um, but this will also bring some more eyes to the dei project badging that we're doing with all in so um, that's exciting hooray um, basically, the blog post talks about what the badging initiative is, um, how it works, um, vaguely how it works, and um, mostly we're looking for pilot projects and volunteers with help building out metrics. So obviously, we're already working on that stuff, the metrics anyway, here in this group, but um, it's just so you all know, we've kind of put a call out to folks who might be interested in collaborating on this project and working with us. So maybe we'll see more faces in this meeting, maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how it so goes. Is it a meeting or a blog post? It's a blog post, but in the blog post, we point people to, to this meeting if they wanna help out with the metrics or building out those levels. Uh, it, well, well, I should say in the blog post, we point them to the information form, which then posts or forwards them to this meeting or else if they're interested in being a pilot project, we're going to send them to you, Sean. So, okay. Yeah. So, so in one form, they can do both things. Essentially, they can either help out with metrics and building the levels, or they can be a pilot project or do both. Does that make sense? So, should you pro uh, pro can you provide a link to the blog post because it sounds like I need to go to the blog post to be on a meeting at nine a.m. Pacific or no. I Okay. No, the, right. Yeah, the blog post is Allow me to be posted. dense. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah. No, the blog post is good. They're going to publish it right like at 9 a.m. Okay. That's it's in the queue to be published on the GitHub blog. All right. So th that's when they're going to like hit the button that says publish to everybody. Okay. So um, there's no meeting. <laughs> there's no meeting. This is this meeting, the work, All the right. working group, that's the only meeting. 
I got lost. Yeah, somewhere somewhere along the line, I I discerned there was a meeting incorrectly. So yeah, no, no, no. You're good. You're good. Um, and I don't have a link to the blog post yet because it's not been published. But there is a draft that you might have seen or been linked to in Slack or something. Yeah. So. But it's probably too late to make any changes to that now. So. Yeah, I know. Hey, <laughs> I've got some feedback 20 minutes before you post this. <laughs> it, it's going to be what it's going to be. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. Um, and then also, just so people know, it is on the All In website right here under the DEI badging program. So essentially, we're just sending people in the blog post to this form where people can kind of just just indicate their interest in being a part of the collaboration so there you go um so that's exciting yeah very exciting any questions comments <clears throat> on that i guess mine it's four and it should be maybe three because it's not event badging I'm, I'm really hoping that like so as a project is badged by having the dei.md file, as we've talked about many times, as part of that, part of that service, they get a report, Sean, that you're generating. Yep. What, could you tell me the headers that are in that report that go to, to a person? They're going to vary on the results of the analysis. So if, you know, we're going to obviously have some focus on what the metrics that they're required to fulfill or comment on for each badging level. But different projects will have different positive or different area, different projects will have things they're doing well versus things that they're could use some improvement on or could do better. And so the contents of the report are going to be specific to the contents of our analysis of the repo. What are those things? Is it like issues, age of issues? <clears throat> it's, it's um, uh, inclusivity of the discourse. It is the presence or absence of um, a consistent form of discourse. It involves, it includes responsiveness. Um, to issues, it includes discourse patterns. So we'll put the groups in clusters that they won't see, but based on where they sit in uh, different um, computational models of corporate open source, government open source, and scientific open source, we'll decide to give them some feedback. And that, that feedback is going to focus around things that are measurable in GitHub metrics and be related to the metrics that they have to fulfill for that badging. And so we're going back and forth and experimenting with the outcomes of the models and the chaos metrics and how exactly to automate what people see or what the report looks like. So and, it's yeah. inclusivity of discourse in what? In a PR? In an uh, issue? It, issues, PRs, those are the main things, but any any discourse that we gather, which does include things like discussions, so you can, when you do a release, for example, open a discussion under the release, that's not as common as you might hope. So for the most part, it is uh, discussion around pull requests and issues. Okay, and then... <clears throat> Another I'm looking is it's the responsiveness to issues. Is that a topic by itself? Or is it the discourse in the response to issues? It's the the main thing we're looking at is the inclusivity of the language and the discourse in the response to issues. However, we will look at um in providing feedback, um suggesting different ways that you might think about being respon and responsiveness is part of it, but it can also include suggestions for using more encouraging and inclusive language um, as well without saying it that way. Uh, the way that will everything will be phrased in a hey, have you considered this sort of a positive light. So is the main mm -hmm. header 
just about inclusivity of discourse in issues, PRs, and discussions. Pulse, is that the, the if if that's if that's yeah, if that's something that we think the project needs to work on, then yes. But, so one thing I'm one thing we're we're sorting through right now is how to, um, you know, it, before yesterday, our, it was in our mind that there would be some period um, of time between the first badging and the second badging, and we decided yesterday that that wouldn't be the case. So we're pivoting a little and deciding, okay. We, we, need, we need to target the metrics a little bit more. So the structure of the structure is changing a little bit. Why? Because the previous assumption on the design team for the last six months has been there would be some time between um, when someone applies for a brand bronze as opposed to a silver. And we decided yesterday there would not be necessarily related what so this, i don't how is that related because this is it's, it's related because a lot you know we were we were focused on communication inclusivity in the in the report and that is still a focus but yep. we we now have to make sure that we narrow our analysis of that and what we advise projects to do really more directly in line with the specific things that they're the specific metrics that they're being badged for to a larger extent than previously we had planned it's not a problem it's just a change so, so there aren't there aren't these standard headings it like there are in the dei.md file Okay, I just have, I'm having a, I just like have a really hard time getting my head around what people are going to get in this mm -hmm. report. I don't know if it's just me and it might be just me, but like, because the report is really just a service that we're providing to the communities that apply to the badge. So we say, yeah, we've checked for the DEI.MD file and here's a report on certain things that we are looking at within your repository, right? And here are some suggestions on how to address those things, whatever those things might be. And inclusivity of discourse and issues, like what, what is right here, like that, that makes a lot of sense to me. And so mm -hmm. you would just, you know, say like, here are the things that we can take a look at beyond the metrics that you have attended to in the DEI.MD file. Right. And so, oh. and as you receive this report, like here's here are just some things that we're seeing, and here are mm -hmm. a few suggestions on how to possibly address this in yeah. discourse if you would like to do so. Yeah, no, exactly right. And and like I like I mentioned in our meeting yesterday, things that those insights that that, that uh, what we see will not change if projects are going and applying for badge, the next level badge the next week. Like there's no new discourse to tell them anything that we didn't tell them a week ago. No, I, and, right. And so that's why, that's why, you know, we're, we're trying to figure, you know, we're working on, okay, well, what's, what, what's gonna be different? Um, and how can we, I think, instead of focusing only on inclusivity or largely on the different indicators of inclusivity that exist across the ways that people interact on a project we're going to slice it using the metrics that are part of the badge that enables us to provide a unique insight at each badging level if a project decides to go through it a week like this badge week one this badge week two that doesn't give the the machine learning any chance to get new data and provide any different insight than they did a week before. Whereas if months pass, then there is enough more data to say something or have some insights that are encouraging or reinforcing of what was said in the prior report. So the process is a little bit different, not good or bad, not longer, shorter, just the design will be a little bit different. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. 
So uh, for the uh, for kind of that qualitative part, we're asking the projects to reflect on kind of those those four metrics, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so on, on your end, how many metrics or models are, are you going to be presenting uh, at each badge level? Is, are you going to look at just kind of, well, are you four, going to look at four things as well or? Well, there's four in the bronze level. Uh, we won't only look at those four, but we're probably going to have to highlight those four in, in, in light of the rapidity that we think people may go through the badging process. Okay, so so your measures your measures are directly related to those four metrics at each at each badge level. Our recommendations will be directly related. Um, we're going to run the same we're going to run the same models, look for the same inclusivity language. However, as I said, the results won't be different. So we'll have to provide recommendations more more explicitly targeted to the metrics in the badge, which I don't think is a bad thing. But I also think one sort of mental framework thing, Matt, I think is is to think about we're trying to provide uh, the best advice. And so based on what we learn about the project, so there's, I would say, a menu. You could think of the reports as a menu of recommendations that could be provided based on what we learned um and and i don't have that uh i don't have that sorted out since i guess it was i guess it was monday we talked about this yesterday was kind of lost for me because i was sick um <clears throat> but yeah so are they based are they based on models then or computational models yes okay so you think it'll be like four computational models that are related to those kind of four metrics yeah i i i need to provide a design for the dei reports that reflects not only what we had in mind but now in addition what we talked about on monday so that's on my to-do list for this week i was going to have it done yesterday but uh, my body had other ideas Okay, we're actually out of time, so um, maybe we can continue the conversation async in Slack or however we need to, but um, we are out of time for this meeting. So um, yeah, I hope everybody has a good rest of your day <coughs> and we will, Sean, I hope you feel better. <laughs> okay. I feel better today, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, we will see everybody here same time next week. Take care, everyone. Thanks. All right. Are you back from traveling, Sean? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was oh. back Saturday. This is where I probably grabbed the fun. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Later.